I have a confession to make. Well, this confession is not necessarily a current confession of a current sin and or mistake that I've made, but one that I've made in the past and uh, wonder if other people um, have dealt with and or are dealing with this issue right now. And that is taking the scriptures out of context in order to... Um, excuse a certain decision or certain behavior that you've made and in doing so you're actually uh, using scriptural backing by taking it out of context to back up a certain uh, position or viewpoint or decision that you've made or have taken so let me give you an example from personal experience now when I was growing up I was not very coordinated I certainly wasn't athletic. I was your proverbial 90 pound wuss uh, soaking wet, right? I was consistently made fun of by other kids in grade school, junior high, and high school uh, because I was skinny, I didn't have any muscle tone, I wasn't coordinated, I wasn't athletic. Uh, I couldn't even climb that rope in gym class in order to ring the bell at the top. I was the last chosen for a team no matter what game it was in gym class, whether it be, you know, uh, softball or soccer or what have you. And I was the first one that always got out practically when it came to dodgeball. I was people's first target because I was easy, right? I was an easy target. So I was constantly being made fun of. And as a child, you you know, it hurts. It's It's very painful when you're made fun of by a group of other kids who are bigger, stronger than you are, um, and that are good at sports. And as a young child, I wanted to be good at sports because I wanted people to notice me. I wanted people to admire me. I wanted to be, you know, picked at, for at least the top five, if not the top ten, you know, in, in a team. I didn't want to be the last one chosen because, oh, I was the only one left. Okay, well, I guess we'll take Shoemaker over there, right? Uh, it hurt. And, you know, I admired the action heroes of the movies, you know, the, the, the Rambos, the, the Chuck Norrises, uh, the tough guys that, that used uh, their, their brawn over brain. You know, they, they, um, people were afraid of them because they were big and strong and powerful. And they could do all sorts of amazing things with their bodies, you know, jumping and leaping and 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 uh, all these kind of things. And I wanted to be like those guys. I would watch wrestling all the time on the weekends when I was little, just always dreaming of that day when I would have when I'd be big and strong and have the muscles that they did. And people would look up to me and fear me and respect me because I was big and muscular. Well, guess what, folks? That time never came. <laughs> I mean, I, I did get some muscle, but uh, I've never been, you know, a big bulk of a person like your uh, Steven Seagal or Sylvester Stallone type guys, right? Um, I never become very good uh, at any sports. And as a result, uh, I don't like team sports because I've never seen teamwork within team sports because I was always the one that was on the outside. I was the all, always the one that was being ridiculed and made fun of, and I was always the outsider looking in. You know, I, I, I even if I tried out for a team, I never made any teams because I was no good. So uh, regarding sports, I've grown to love individual sports like the X Games. You know, skateboarding and bike riding and uh, bowling and sports where you're not on a team. You're just playing for yourself. You're playing against everybody else and you're trying to outdo yourself and outdo your personal best. I loved combat sports, wrestling, boxing, kickboxing, MMA, mixed martial arts, right? Those are the types of sports that, that I gravitated to. But when I was younger, I grew up in a Free Will Baptist uh, church, and our Free Will Baptist church had a softball team. Well, I thought that was a way that I could get noticed and appreciated and, and what have you. And so uh, I joined the uh, softball team, got a softball jersey, but guess what? 
I I I only got I only got the uh pity playing time. You know, all the guys that were good, um, you know, they were playing the majority of the game and out of the entire softball game, I may have you know, gone to bat twice. The rest of the time I was sitting on the bench and and they only let me go to bat because they felt sorry for me and because they felt like they had to include me and they only put me in to bat when they knew they were so far ahead there was no way they could lose and if ever they put me out on the field guess what i was way in the outfield and that section of the outfield where balls rarely traveled and as a result i got bored sitting on the bench and i would wander off and do other things and and i was never really into team sports I couldn't sit down on a Sunday afternoon and watch a football game or a baseball game. I couldn't follow it. It was way too boring, way too slow, way too drug out. And, you know, so that was kind of my life in regards to sports. And this bled over into my attitude towards physical fitness. Because I was always made fun of, made fun of in PE, physical education, gym class. I didn't want to work out. You know, I hated those tests where you had to see how many push-ups you could do, how many sit-ups you could do, how much weight you could lift, because I was always made fun of. You never did it in private. The whole class was around you watching, and they got to see how much of a weakling I really was. And that was so degrading and humiliating. So guess what? Where I excelled was in art. Where I excelled was in drama. Where I excelled was in writing. You know, so I became uh, more of a brain guy. I was by no means a scholar, an A-B student. Um, you know, I wasn't a brainiac, but I loved the creative arts. And I was, I was a, a, a deeply uh, rooted young Christian. And so the Bible was what, I was, all, was what I was all about. And, you know, because I got made fun of, uh, in gym class and because I wasn't athletic or coordinated, I got used to being ridiculed. <clears throat> so when I became a believer, when I became a Christian, getting made fun of for being a believer didn't bother me. I took it as a badge of courage. I thought, man, if I'm getting made fun of, I must be doing something right. I must be following the Lord correctly if I'm getting persecuted. You know, so it didn't bother me getting made fun of as a believer. I carried my Bible everywhere I went. I proudly displayed it on my desktop uh, when I was in class uh, at school. Um, you know, so getting made fun of as a believer didn't bother me. But it still bothered me that I was made fun of because I wasn't very athletic. I wasn't very strong. I was a very sickly uh, young boy. Allergies, asthma, the whole nine yards, right? Had an inhaler in my pocket all the time. So, because I was such a strong believer, I actually went looking for scripture verses. Well, maybe I shouldn't say I actually actively looked for them, but when I ran across something in the Word of God that seemed to fit my personality, seemed to fit who I was, oh, I latched onto it, and I used that verse as an excuse to be who I was. Prime example, 1 Timothy chapter 4. Verse 8, King James Version, because I went to a church. I grew up in a church. It was King James only, right? So when I saw this verse, my eyes lit up. I got so excited. I was like, yes, I finally found a Bible verse that excuses me from gym class. I finally found a verse that excuses me from not being physically fit and joining in team sports. And it gave me a reason to hate team sports even more. The Apostle Paul said to Timothy, for bodily exercise profiteth little. But godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. And guess what? I took a Sharpie and I wrote this verse on my softball mitt uh, that I used on our church's softball team. And that's the, uh, that's the verse that I would always quote to myself when I was being made fun of, when I was being ridiculed for being... Uh, you know, the, for, for not being athletic and not being physically fit and being a sickly person, bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. And that was the good part of, of having that verse because it did encourage me and let me know that there was more to life than being an Adonis or, you know, being a Heisman Trophy winner. 
But I use that verse as an excuse not to involve myself in physical fitness and physical activities. Um, you know, I use that as an excuse. Now, on a more comical side, um, let me refer to another verse. Proverbs 28.1 The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Now, I've seen t-shirts with that verse on it and kind of a, maybe a funny quote or a funny saying afterwards saying, this is the reason why I don't go jogging. You know, so it was people were actually using this in a comical way for them to say, this is why I'm not physically fit. This is why I don't go jogging. This is why I don't go running, because the Bible says the wicked flee when no man pursueth, but righteousness, uh, but the righteous are bold as a lion. And I have a playlist on YouTube called Straight Out of Context, where I'm taking biblical verses purposely out of context in a comical way. And this, and I do have a video on Proverbs 28.1. <laughs> so that's my raw confessional, is that because of an insecurity in my own self, and because I didn't like that I was a sickly young boy that had allergies and asthma, and by the way, God has healed me of that. I no longer have allergies or asthma. I no longer take allergy or asthma medication. Thank the Lord. He healed me and delivered me from allergies and asthma, which the root of that sickness and disease was fear. Yeah, it was fear. Anyway, um, so uh, because I was not athletic, I found a verse that I could use and I took out of context in order to not care about gym class, not do my best in gym class, because I was more focused on being a righteous spiritual person than I was being physically fit. And I thought brain was, was more important than brawn instead of having a balanced view. Because you know what? There's plenty of other scripture that says you need to take care of your body because you're the, your body is the temple of the Lord. You know, there's plenty of verses that you could use to promote physical fitness and physical activity and proper diet and exercise. Totally ignored all those so I could excuse myself. And even in Bible college, when I was almost a grown man, I, you know, used that verse as an excuse not to care and not to do my best in regards to getting the best grade I possibly could in physical education. So I don't know if this has happened to you. I don't know if you've done this or you are currently doing this, but examine your life, question your life, and see if you're using any scriptures to, prov to promote a worldview or a decision in your own life uh, to excuse you from doing your best or being your best, whether physically, mentally, or spiritually. So that's my raw confessional, uh, confessional for today. Guys, dwell on it, meditate on it, think about it, get down on your knees, go to, get to the, you know, get in front of the of, of God, get to the throne room of, of God before his throne and say, Lord, am I taking any scripture out of context so as to ex excuse myself from being my best and doing my best? If so, bring it to my attention, convict me of it, that I might repent of it and make things right. So, you know, now I'm in my 40s and I, I exercise regularly. I jog. I practice Taekwondo, I, tr I practice boxing, I weightlift, I ride my bike, um, I do a whole lot of things, and I love it, and I enjoy it now. Probably because I don't have anybody that's grading me on it, probably because I don't have anybody that's making fun of me or criticizing me because maybe I'm not the best at it or what have you, but I'm doing it not for everybody else. I'm doing it for myself because in my early 30s, I started getting aches and pains where I shouldn't have gotten aches and pains. I was like, man, I'm too young for this. And the Lord really convicted me and laid it on my heart that I needed to start eating better. I needed to start uh, exercising. And, you know, it was hard. I didn't enjoy it the first month I was exercising. I'm thinking, man, I'm so stupid. Why am I doing this? But the more I got into it, the more I loved it, the more it became an addiction. And now I have a balanced life physically where I'm, you know, exercising on a regular basis and watching what I eat. Mentally, where I'm continuing my, continuing my education. Uh, by reading good books and, you know, writing poetry and, and uh, having healthy relationships with other people, socially, being social, and spiritually, where I'm in the Word and I'm in prayer uh, on a regular basis and doing Bible study on my own, and I'm, I'm, I'm 
bringing to myself through the internet and, and putting myself under good biblical solid teachers so that I can learn more. And so I have a balanced life physically, mentally, and spiritually. I'm no longer using uh, Bible verses as an excuse to excuse bad behavior or poor decisions in my life. Hey guys, thanks for listening. Go out there and have a great day. God bless. Abrahamsdescendants.com, getting back to the first century in a 21st century way. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press the like button as well as the subscribe button if you haven't done so already and the notification bell that'll let you know every time I make a new video. And don't forget to share this with a friend. Also, visit our website at abrahamsdescendants.com. Thanks. Shalom. Thanks for watching. Stay connected by subscribing to our other social media accounts and visiting our website at abrahamsdescendants.com.